I think uh, to echo some of the thoughts that he just conveyed, like whenever I've spoken to, you know, my peers, friends, mentees, mentors about SQL, I've never needed to really sell SQL or relational databases for their importance. Like there's a lot of intuitive understanding about why they're important and why we should learn them. But at the same time, opportunities to really dig in and understand they want to, on an intuitive level, uh, there, there are not many. Like uh, take, for example, you're an average Rails programmer like me many years ago. Uh, I spent years uh, using Ruby on Rails uh, with active record and not understanding what did internally uh, or how it used MySQL or how it used Postgres. And when I had the opportunity to do it, that sort of opened my eyes like, hey, I mean, this is all available for me and I've not been looking at it. Like, and I've had many of these kind of opening uh, moments uh, throughout my usage of relational databases. And then uh, once I sort of uh, crossed that of understanding the basics, foundations, and back to hardness, then I started teaching and talking about it to you know other friends and uh, mentors, mentees. And then from there, sort of a passion to teach SQL developed. And that's what Aditya was talking about. Like we keep exchanging stories, design patterns, like have you done this? Would you do this? What's a good example of this? Or how would you teach this? And uh, and that theme has sort of been with me for, for, for a while. Uh, coming back to SQL and join, uh, joins especially, like one of the things that scares people away is joins. Uh, and not and not for good reason, honestly. Like again, like a lot of the reason behind people are being scared of joins is lack of exposure and understanding. And some of that I'm going to try and dispel today. Uh, like a first principle approach has long been my favorite way of understanding something, and that is what I'll try to do today. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. So we're going to start with. Uh, Is everyone able to see my screen? Okay. Yep. Yep, you can. All right. Great. Cool. So, um, so the topic is fearless joints. Uh, the title of the talk. Uh, just enough SQL to be effective, and, and the reason why I call it fearless is because of that deep-rooted fear of joints uh, that a lot of people have. Uh, maybe fear is a little harsh, uh, but at least like there is an uneasiness uh, around writing joints. Uh, you know, people have uh, have these notions like, oh, joints will not scale, or, or like joints are hard, etc. And some of these may be true. If you're Google, you know, it's very right for you to worry, be worried about writing joints, uh, a very different level of problem. Uh, not everybody's Google. I, I like the kind of data sets I operate, they're not Google level databases. And so understanding joints on a very fundamental level uh, gives us uh, a tool of writing and uh, working and understanding data that very uh, few other tools give you. And then uh, a note about just enough as SQL. Well, the the core of SQL is not very large. Uh, it has a very short semantic syntax. The actual syntax is big uh, and wide, but the core of SQL is not very not very large. However, to cover it in a session of one hour is impossible, which is why I'm taking that uh, workshop uh, later this month. Uh, so today, what we'll do is we'll sort of do a kickoff uh, based on joints. Uh, just a little bit about me, already I think we've spoken enough. Uh, if you really want to understand about uh, joints or what I do or the workshop, some of the links here. I'm active on Twitter. I'm always happy to chat about all things tech, SQL, Ruby, Python. Uh, ping me anytime. Uh, but speaking, continuing about that conversation we were having earlier, right? I have a mission, uh, and that mission is help people outgrow Active Record, Django, or DB, and friends and other ORMs. Like I want you to, if you're a programmer who, who uses these tools, then I want you to outgrow these to, these tools. <coughs> sure, you, uh, if you're writing a Django app, uh, you know you want to use Django or DB because it's going to make a lot of things easy for you. But then I don't want you to stop there. I want you to go and understand that in depth 
uh, go around it, work around it, uh, understand the semantic meaning of different things the right way, the idiom, idioms around designing relational DBs, idioms around writing queries, and you know, use them. Uh, a very eloquent friend of mine once said, there are many common things between vacuum cleaners and ORMs, and the, the primary common thread being that they both suck. <coughs> so uh, I will sort of, I sort of echo that thought uh, in some manner. But today's talk is specifically about uh, joints. And if we want to expand on what about joints, well, we're going to try and understand joints. Uh, we'll also try to learn how to read and write complex joints. Uh, and then the the eternal question as to what join should I use and when should I use which join and how do I start writing a query or how, how do I approach writing a join. So if you look at documentation, Postgres, for example, has fantastic docs. Uh, they'll explain the syntax uh, in depth. Uh, there are examples enough for you to work out uh, or work through, uh, which will give you some sort of an understanding. Uh, what uh, what we don't teach and what comes from experience and working with other people is uh, an approach that you should use. Like where do you start? What do you first look at? How do you grow that circle? You know, I have this data. Uh, and uh, this is my out this is my outcome that I would want, and this is the data that I'm starting with. Uh, how do I go from A to B? And what is the approach? Uh, what path should I take? How, how do I select which join? How do I, how do I select which tables, etc. And so we we'll look at some of that uh, towards the end of this uh, uh, this talk. Uh, if I had to limit, or if you had to learn a single thing from this class, I would say the first part where we understand joins from first principles, uh, understand that. And I think everything else will sort of follow follow through. Uh, so speaking of joins, uh, coming back to join. By the way, uh, should we wait for more people to join the class, or should we move on? Um, <coughs> uh, all right, that was a bad attempt at a pun. But anyway, uh, if you've been around with SQL for a long time, uh, these are some of the terms that you would have seen specifically around joins: inner joins, outer joins, uh, left, right. Uh, full uh, recursive, rectangular, Cartesian, lateral. Uh, lateral is a recent addition uh, to Postgres and uh, MariaDB. Oracle has had it uh, for some time. And so, uh, if you have written queries, uh, I'm sure you would have some sort of an understanding of uh, what are these for and what do they do. And I'm sure you, you would have seen that uh, infamous, as I like to call it, infamous Venn diagram where like some parts of Venn diagram are colored and others are not. Uh, so in today's class, I want you to unlearn uh, that, that Venn diagram. Uh, the, the fundamental idea behind a join is that you have sets and you'll combine them. Uh, you, your data or information is spread across uh, multiple sets and you're going to combine them. Uh, or you know you have sets and you're going to join them. That's, that's where the, the, the word join comes from relational algebra where you join multiple sets. Uh, not very different from matrix multiplication, for example. Uh, and then the core idea behind joins is that joins are about sets and not table. If uh, if somebody says join, and the first thing that comes to your mind is that I'm going to join two tables, then that is the very first thing I want you to unlearn. Joins are not about tables, or not only about tables, joins are about sets. We always join two sets. We never only join two tables. Table is a set, so it's a subset uh, of of uh, say sets. And so yes, you can join tables, and that's what we mostly do. Uh, but it's not uh, limited to tables. For example, your data could be spread across tables. Uh, your data could be spread across views. Uh, it could also be across different files uh, mapped as a foreign data wrapper. For example, in Postgres. Your data could be in another query, uh, and you could still join with this query. And all these are examples of sets. Uh, when you write a select query, that returns a set. Uh, and then that you can join that or treat that as a table and join uh, with other tables or other sets, and then you know uh, get the result that you want. So this is the the number one take, uh, the number one take, and the uh, and the number one thing that uh, you should learn, or or you should take away from this class is that joins are about sets 
and that fundamental default association of join with table if you can break it you're, you're on a very very good path uh, and then the, the other thing i said unlearn that venn diagram like the circles left left and right and uh, coloring i'm not going to show it for the reason that i want you to unlearn but i'm sure if you work to join you've seen this venn diagram uh, erase it from your memory like forget about it we, we, we don't need that <coughs> uh, okay so enough about slides uh, it's illustration time now i'm going to share uh, a whiteboard and we're going to look at uh, some concepts specifically around uh, join so So is my screen visible? Like, uh, are you able to see like a whiteboard? Yep. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay, so let's look at, uh, so we're talking about sets, uh, tables, and uh, join side. So let's say, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, two sets, uh, then join them, because we're, going to talk, we're talking about that. And then in that context, we are going to look at what is left, what is inner, what is right, what is outer. Uh, what is uh, cross, etc. Lateral joints will cover a bit later. They are a specific uh, implementation and performance improvement over uh, over regular joints. Uh, from a from a relational theory, they don't fit in the original relational theory the same way inner and outer joints do. And and we'll see some of that uh, as we as we progress. So let's say we have uh, like a set. Uh, we have a table. One, let's see, B two. Now, is this uh, is this visible? So this is let's say this is a set uh, set one, and then we have another set which says one one and say three three. Uh, so far so good. Uh, visible because I can't hear everybody. I would appreciate. Yeah, that. yeah, okay. yeah. Cool. So now, now we, if you want to join this, this is our fundamental working set. There is a reason why I chose a very small set. Uh, I'll come to that uh, soon. But let's say now we want to join this set. So the, the most fundamental, uh, the most fundamental join is what you call as a uh, rectangular join or a cross product. Uh, what it means is we join every element of one set or let's say the left side set with every element of the right side set and before we start joining uh, let me let me add something uh, to this diagram uh, null is a special uh, element which is a part of every single set so this is symbol for the null uh, for brevity sake i'm not going to write null every time but Whenever you talk about sets, you can practically assume that null is a part of that set, and it features into all kinds of calculations and decisions uh, that the DB engines take. And so we had our original set of two records. We've added our default null, uh, and then now we're going to try and uh, see how joins work in in that sense. So if you look at our uh, if you look at our uh, super set now, there are three elements in the left set and three elements on the right set. And any joining activity starts at joining each element with each of the other element. So if we have to go and write it down, uh, what that means is say a, a1 will be joined three times with each, ele each element from the other side, which is say one, one, three, three and then null. And then similarly, our our other record, uh, which is B two, again join three times with um, none. And then there's one uh, honorable special. Oops. Null. 
Now, uh, for all practical purposes, this is our sort of what I call as our working set. Is, is this even readable? Uh, I'm looking at it on a tablet, so it's readable to me. Yeah, it is to me. Uh, but is it visible, readable? Yeah, seems fine. It is, okay. Because it is very important. It's very important that we understand this. Okay, perfect. It is very important that we understand this uh, for what is coming next. So now, uh, coming back to our uh, super set, or as I like to call it, a working set. Let's say we are working with two sets, and we're going to join them. Then this is our, uh, this is what I call as our working set. So we start here, and then every other thing follows from this. Uh, for all practical purposes, uh, what most uh, DB engines do is that they don't consider uh, this case. Uh, oops. Uh, okay. Yep. This case, the last one where the null is joined with null, for all practical purposes, it is of very little uh, use in everyday uh, every life. It is from a from a mathematics perspective, it is important. When you write proofs of things, uh, when you write proof like, oh, left join is going to uh, output or produce a particular set. And when you when we are demonstrating proofs, so in that case, uh, the null join is important. But we are not doing any proofs today uh, out of scope for this class. Uh, so for our discussion, we can consider that this case does not exist. Uh, so now, so now the next thing is that uh, how do we add uh, our, the concepts that we know, like inner, outer, left, right? Uh, so, so let's talk about that. So there are two kinds of joint. One is your regular rectangular join, uh, a cross join, and the other is uh, it doesn't have any predicate or it doesn't have any matching condition. Uh, what we do is what we have just done here. We just take every element from left and uh, join it with every element from right. All the permutations and combinations, well, all the combinations, not not permutations. Uh, then comes your inner and outer joints, which are based on a predicate. Uh, so what SQL uh, standard allows is, okay, join these two sets given uh, this condition. So if you had to add context, right? In this case, say for example, A1 uh, can be joined with 1, 1, because they have some common element, there's some uh, shared context. Uh, you know, like for example, uh, posts, and if you're joining posts and comments, right? So you can join post, uh, uh, and comments based on comment dot post id equal to post dot id. So because there, there's a shared context, there is some shared information. So similarly in here, a one and one one have some shared like the number one they share. But in this case, a one and three, uh, you know, three three, that doesn't make sense. So in our, what we'll say, like in our case, that join the uh, the numbers with literals, where the number from the numbers table, a number set, is equal to the Lit, uh, the number from the literal uh, set, so which means, so we, we join A1, uh, then we join, uh, and that's it. So right now we only have one matching entry in this case. So this is where our inner and outer, the concept of inner and outer comes in. Whenever we're adding a predicate, I'm gonna cover the syntax uh, in a little bit, but let's say now if you're writing a left join, uh, what it means is that now we are joining on whenever this element matches, we are joining. So if you look at the table or if you look at this particular join, there's no other uh, set where uh, those two columns match or those two values match, which means if we do an inner join, this is the only uh, record that will be selected for us. And this is where our left and right concepts come in. So now if we're doing left join, what that means is from the left side, uh, you know, pick the entry that, that doesn't have a match on the right side. What it means is that when we do left join, the right hand side null is going to come into picture. And this is where, this is the reason why we added null in the first place uh, for in, in each set. So when, when we join on a predicate value, uh, which is what you're used to looking at, uh, in the context of left join, what that means is select the set from the left side no matter if there's a match or not. Similarly, uh, for say a right join, if you were to do a right join, the same thing applies. Uh, 
Ah, that reminds me. So let's go back here. Which means one. these two. So total we have about nine to one, two, three, nine entries. Now what that means is when when we are talking about a right join, we we also need to consider this part. And for left, we need to consider these. Uh, so far, so good. So, so the idea of left and right comes from selecting elements on the left side of set and the right side of set, uh, specifically with a null match. Now, this will get a little more clearer when we actually start writing queries, because that is what we are used to visualizing based on. But the fundamental idea is this, that we took a set, uh, we took two sets that had two entries each, or two elements each, uh, then we added our fundamental default uh, entry of null, and then we multiply it, we added each entry against each entry, uh, that gives us a total of nine uh, total entries. Uh, and then for our practical purposes, we ignored the entry that had null on both sides. And then then we looked at left and right. So now I'll, I'll repeat again, uh, because again, it, uh, even though uh, it's trivial for those who understand, it's not trivial for those who don't understand. So from from an inner and left and out, right and outer join perspective, inner is when we do a strict match, which means now let's say we decide to match on the middle column, uh, only where we have a strict match, uh, those rows are going to be picked. And then outer means we're going to pick entries where there's a null. And again, left means we're going to pick entries where the left side does not have a match on the right side. And then right means we're going to pick entries where the right side does not have a match on the left side. Uh, so if you look at it from a symmetry perspective, right? Left and right are very symmetric. Uh, and that purely depends on the ordering of the sets. Uh, if you do, if you flip the right side set to left side, then your left join is same as the right join. And there's no difference. Uh, similarly, when you do an outer join, when you add a null entries from both sides, that's like in, including left and right together. <coughs> and uh, there are there are no practical uses of doing a full outer join, uh, except maybe some corner cases in uh, ETL pipeline and data processing engines. In your everyday life, the two most important thing that uh, we need to be concerned about is the inner join where we only select this and then the left left join where we have a match on the right side uh, so when when i try to sort of write queries i i call the null as a as a whole uh h o l e whole uh when when you want to query for holes or or when you want to query for data that does not exist uh you're going to use null and whereas when, when you're going to write queries uh, for data that does exist, uh, we are going to write uh, inner joins. Uh, okay, so in order to proceed uh, further, I'm going to introduce uh, a schema to everyone. And the queries that we're going to talk about will be in the context of uh, that schema. Uh, quick check, are the slides uh, still visible? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So uh, let's come back to join semantics a little bit uh, before we go on to the schema. Uh, what we what we have seen so far uh, is that set L joins uh, the set on the left joins the set on the right, uh, and then based on a predicate. And without the predicate, back to the square join, which uh, which is not super important right now. I uh, will come back to it uh, at a later point. Uh, uh, this is the set where we have all the elements joined with each other, uh, uh, all the all the combinations. Uh, like I said, th those are purely from a theoretical uh, importance or a mathematical uh, importance. Like for example, if you're doing a scalar product of two sets, maybe you could use uh, a rectangular join. But as far as practicality is governed us uh, in everyday life, 
we are mostly concerned with joints that are based on a predicate, which means we are looking at inner joint and outer joint, and specifically inner and left joint, uh, because left and right joint purely uh, are like a mirror image of each other. And what you can do with right joint, you can do with the left joint too. Uh, exceptions apply, but they're not super important for now. Uh, so yeah, so so this is a fundamental uh, uh, sort of syntax uh, for joints. And if it looks too simple, it's because it is simple. Uh, any join is basically on the left, there's a set and on the right, there's a set. Now, again, if you want to derive an intuitive understanding of what the set are, uh, we, we'll go back to our uh, our previous, uh, previous slides where we said, uh, a set could be a table, it could be a query, it could be a file, it could be anything. So for example, the set L here could be a select query in itself. And the set R here could be another select query in itself. And we can still join them. We ultimately, we're, we're only looking to join two sets. And if every query uh, returns a set. So let's look at joins uh, in action. Uh, to understand and look at some more queries, we're gonna, uh, like I said, we're gonna introduce a little schema that will stay with us for the duration of this talk. And we'll use that to write a few queries. So let's say uh, we, we are a gossip uh, platform and not the gossip platform, gossip protocol platform, like a magazine, you know, Filmfare kind of magazine. Uh, and we have rumors, we have tidbits uh, about those rumors and we have sources uh, of those rumors. You know, people or uh, different sources provide different rumors. Uh, so for example, a rumor is provided by many sources uh, and a source provides many rumors, a, a standard many-to-many -many, uh, relationship. Uh, uh, another bit is a tidbit, right? A tidbit about a rumor. One rumor is often comprised of multiple small factoids, uh, never, never like a single source. And so a tidbit is that, a tidbit is about a rumor, which means it belongs to a rumor. And again, a tidbit could be provided by multiple sources. And then again, one source can provide multiple tidbits. Uh, it's, it's actually much better uh, explained with an example. So for example, there's a rumor going that some big company is going all remote. And the sources for that is like one popular magazine and Buzzstream, a popular platform. And then, so the tidbits are not very hard to imagine. For example, employees uh, you know, are given home setup budget is a tidbit or a factoid that uh, is floating around or a job job uh, opening was posted on WeWork remotely, which has never happened before for this particular company. Uh, they hired Jane, a very senior leader uh, who's outspoken, uh, who's an outspoken remote work supporter or the CEO of the famous company followed the remote uh, podcast on Twitter. So these are, these are tidbits uh, independently. They may or may not mean anything, but together they form a rumor. And this is our, uh, our data model. Uh, I hope like this is clear enough. I'm going to go ahead with the assumption that uh, this is clear enough. Uh, but in, in fact, you know what? Let's take a pause and uh, let's answer questions if there are any. Uh, and then we'll go, for, go go ahead with the next section. So uh, right, have there so, been any uh, questions so far? Yeah. Yeah, there's been one interesting question. Uh, some got answered through uh, as as you explained some things uh, but one question is uh, does an inner the output of an inner join and a left join have no common elements or other oh. are there common right. elements between a output of an inner join and a left join and by left i am assuming he's, he means left outer join left outer join correct Yes. So, uh, so yeah, good question. I think uh, I'm glad you asked the question because understanding the answer to this question is like, again, like, like I said, fundamental to understanding how joints work. So the common element between an inner join and a left join is the element where the match happens. So let's say you're joining uh, in our case, a, a and one with one and one literal. And then, so in an inner join, uh, the A1 and 1-1 one one row is going to show up. Whereas in a left join, it, that row will show up. And additionally, A1 and null on the right will also show up. So from a set theory perspective, a left join is a superset of an inner join. 
So I'll explain again. Uh, so I'll, I'll give a uh, slightly more uh, uh, at-home example. If you're joining, say, posts, uh, or let's say you're talking about a blog, then say art, there's a table called articles and there's a table called comments. Uh, comments belong to an article. Article has many comments. And so now, now if you do like an artic, uh, join article, uh, left join uh, po uh, comments on article.id equal to comment.article id. Now in this case, uh, so let's talk about inner join first. So, so let's say you do articles inner join comments. In this case, the only articles that have an associated comment are going to show up in, in the result set. Because now uh, we are doing inner join, which means there's a strict match, which means nothing that did not match or produced a match, uh, a null match on either side is not going to be selected. Whereas the moment we do left join, what that means is that select the one where there was a match, but additionally also select where there was no match for the left-hand side record on the right-hand side. So, so in terms of understanding or, or a mnemonic, uh, left join means pick the record or, uh, from the left side and right join means pick the record from the right side. So, so in this case, uh, left article left join comment means you will select articles where there is a comment and you will select articles when there's no comment. Whereas when you do inner join, you're only going to select articles when there, there's actually a comment. Uh, so that, that's, that's the main difference. Uh, left join is like a super set of inner join. Is there, is there anything else? Any other question? I hope this was clear. I hope so too. Um, cool. Now there's, there's no further questions. Uh, okay. Great. Hang on, there's one more coming in. Uh, okay. What would an outer join be in terms of this article analogy? Oh, okay, great. Yeah, so uh, an outer join in, in terms of articles is that you select articles that have a comment and you select articles that do not have a comment. Whereas in inner join is select articles that have a comment. So, so this, is a, this is a question of at least one or zero or one. Like in, in regex, you would write uh, plus uh, for you know an at least match and a star for, uh, for zero and one match or, or question mark for zero and one uh, the same same concept uh, inner join only select articles that have at least one associated comment uh, and then outer join select those but then apart from that also select articles that do have that do not have any comment uh, current it was current right yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. And, and I think when you run a query on these right. actual query, things will be apparent. Correct. So, so I think uh, things uh, will, will get a little clearer. So on top of this uh, rumor source tidbit model. Uh, so the reason I picked a slightly wacky sounding model is that often when we are trying to understand something, if there is a very intimately familiar domain, like articles and comments, often, uh, we look at it from the lens of what we already understand. Uh, and, and I specifically wanted to avoid some of that. So when, when the domain is different, uh, when, when it's out of, uh, out of normal or out of ordinary, then what happens is then you can look at the semantic of the join instead of looking at thinking. In, so right now, I don't want you thinking in terms of articles and comments. Uh, we'll get there. But I, I, what I want you to think of in terms of like left and right set, and what matches and what doesn't match. And, and for that reason, uh, this slightly wacky sounding domain I picked. And on top of that, we're also going to look at a very, very common use case, uh, labels. Uh, your standard labels, you know, a label can have sub-labels, sub-labels can have sub-labels, and then uh, labels can actually have a parent label, or one single parent label. <coughs> Together, they make uh, a classic uh, tree hierarchy of tags or you know, department, sub-departments, uh, whatever way you want to imagine, but, but a classic uh, tree hierarchy. Uh, in terms of programming, if you were to write like a depth first search uh, for, let, let's say we want to find out all the descendants, then you'll have to write a depth first search uh, and you can do that in, in SQL using joins. And we're going to look at that uh, a little later. Uh, so, so if you want to give examples again, say for example, computer science is like a, an overarching label. 
and then there are sub labels uh, you know it's open to imagination you, you add your own uh, your own things uh, some examples are like say os and then under os comes like memory, memory management uh, processes and signals ruby kernel and other things uh, device drivers what not uh, then there's software engineering which is under computer science arguably uh, but definitely different from operating systems and then under software engineering you have op design under which you have encapsulation and you have functional programming etc so we have like a higher a proper tree hierarchy of labels uh, and so we are going to sort of uh, look at this uh, this schema will be uh, sort of central as uh, as we go through and write a bunch of queries uh, i'm going to switch to uh, switch to my query editor now <coughs> Uh, okay, so are people able to see the screen? I'm assuming yes. Uh, yes. people are. Okay. Hey, so, uh, so Zainab, I need to take like a maybe a couple of minute break, maybe two minutes. I just need to get some water. So I, I think I'll take a quick pause and I'll be back. Uh, in the meantime, if you have other questions, we can sort of uh, collect them and I'll answer. And then once I'm back, we can uh, sort of go on. Sure. Um, Aditya, any remarks or comments at this point from you? Uh, not really. I mean, I think once the actual queries are run, a lot of stuff will become clear for those who are maybe still grappling with it. So, oh, sounds good. I think everybody can do with a water break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish there were days when we had the Zoom feature where I could just push my hand through the computer and give Swan the water bottle. <laughs> Actually, one interesting thought came to me as Swanand was talking about the SQL being like right at the introduction that uh, if you take an analogy between uh, data storage and databases and programming languages, SQL is like the C of data storage. And, I mean, the C language, not SE, SEA. And uh, joints are like the pointers in C and in more ways than one, like one is everyone is afraid of them or at least beginners are afraid of them. And secondly, they actually help establish relations. So that's an interesting analogy that just came to mind. Hmm. Interesting. All, All right. right. Swan, uh, yep. Okay, cool. So uh, I'm going to quickly, uh, just to confirm the screen is still visible, right? Yep. Okay, perfect. All right, so yeah, so uh, we'll just quickly go ahead and create the tables and uh, things that we've just spoken about, rumors, tidbits, sources, etc. And uh, I I did that uh, some time ago. And so now we, what we'll do is we'll try to write some queries, uh, you know, based on these. Uh, the very first query, and again, I'm going to start with uh, very fundamental queries uh, involving inner join, and then we'll sort of graduate into some more complex queries. Uh, the, the first, the very first query uh, that we want to write is say, uh, you know, name all the sources of uh, a given rumor, you know, for example, if there's a particular rumor, uh, which we're looking at, uh, a big company is going remote, uh, then, then we, want to, we want to list down all the sources that are associated with this. Now, now the actual query, some of you might have already written it in your head. Uh, and that's fine. What I want to uh, come to is that this is a very specific type of query. Uh, it's called like a, what I, I mean, I personally call it like a positive lookup where you're looking for presence of data. Where you look, you're trying to find uh, things that are there already or are present in the DB, a, a positive query. And whenever we are looking at a positive query where we select uh, data that is present, uh, we are typically looking at an inner join. Uh, you can also consider inner join as an assertion. Like when you say inner join, or when you when you start writing, uh, or when you execute an inner join, you can be sure that only uh, rows. Uh, I'm, and 
and back row tables. So only rows uh, that have a matching element are going to be selected. So anyway, that's an assertion. Like in the result set, there is not there's not going to be a row which will not be matching to our condition or our predicate. And so in this case, for example, if you were to write uh, all the sources of a given uh, a given rumor, so let's say select rumors. Let's say rumors. And then we now, like I said, we're going to do inner join sources. Uh, and now, here, if you want to look at our, I want to go back to our uh, our schema a little bit. So rumors and so, uh, sources. So the way we think about uh, uh, writing a join is that we always uh, start looking at which uh, set. And now I'm going to pause calling it a set, and I'm going to call it a table. But in your mind, know that when I say table. I actually mean a set, and so now which table uh, contains the data that we are looking at, or we or we want. So what's the outcome that we want? So in this case, we the outcome is that we want rumors and we want sources. Uh, so we want to join uh, the rumor set with the sources set, and we know that right now, if you look at just these two tables, there is no apparent connection between them. Uh, but obviously, like uh, I'm, I'm not going to insult your intelligence. Uh, and I assume that you know that join tables are, are for this reason. So that initial sort of uh, basic thought uh, gives us the idea that our uh, the data that we need is spread across three tables, rumors, sources, and rumor sources. Uh, all the source names are in the sources table, and then all the rumor names are, or rumor descriptions are in the rumors table. And then the join table you know, puts them together. So that's where we start when we want to start writing our uh, join. Uh, uh, yes, one and there's one request and it is, yes. uh, can you like put the schema in the form of the create table statement somewhere in the gist or something so that people can oh, yeah. have it okay. in front. Uh, okay. Or maybe yeah. you can split the screen here, but then you might have to decrease the font. Yeah, I'm just thinking how to do that. Mm, okay, you know what? Even if, okay, I'll, I'll put it in the gist and I'll share the link shortly. Let me, I'll have to stop my screen share for that, but let me do it. So it'll be easier with that. Okay. Another question. Uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't actually hear you. But maybe there are. When someone says bridge tables, I imagine a club where old gentlemen are playing cards. <laughs> bridge. Yeah. Okay, so here's the gist link. Uh, but I, I, I'm not sure. Hang on, let. Cool. So uh, I did not understand the question about bridge tables. Uh, Mira, would you mind elaborating? I think. Are. Sounds like an interest. Uh, are joint tables also called bridge tables? I honestly have no idea if they're called bridge tables. If like uh, maybe Oracle or some other database calls them bridge tables, it could be it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, in a way, you could say that they're just bridging two tables. So semantically, it makes sense. But I've I've never heard them call that. But for I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't call it. Like you know, maybe you can call them bridge tables. But typically, yeah, join tables is what I've always heard them call. Cool. 
All right, uh, back to screen share. Okay, so far so good. Uh, do we see this? Uh, is the screen visible? Yeah. See what data I have. I have some data. All right. So now back to our uh, our question, where we want to list down the sources of a particular rumor. So let's let's quickly write this because there are some more interesting uh, things that I want to show. Okay. So the first join in our uh, in this uh, in this particular query is that. We want to join rumors with rumor sources, uh, and again, we are we are using inner join uh, for the reason I just explained. We are looking at positive data. We are we are trying to query for data that exists, and so for that reason, we are going to use inner join. And then the the next inner join we need is sources. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, at any moment, if Whatever is on the screen is not visible. Pause uh, and let me immediately let me know immediately. I'll, I'll take a moment to explain. But here, here's how our basic query looks like. Uh, from rumors, uh, select whatever uh, inner join. So rumors are going to be inner joined on rumor sources, where uh, rumor source dot rumor ID is equal to the rumor ID, and then we'll go one one level further. We'll join the sources on. Sources with rumor sources, and that will give us uh, that will give us data from all the three tables. We don't want to select everything. Uh, we can probably select something like rumors dot description, and then sources s dot name, and that should that should give us. Uh, so here, uh, in case it's not visible, uh, at the bottom here is our uh, our our data. So for example, the the Brangelina rumor was. Sourced by BuzzFeed and tabloids, and then uh, Falcon, whatever landing gear, F fifty two, a source of BuzzFeed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you if you look at uh, our rumors table, there are a couple of rumors that have no source. Severus Love Lily, for example, Luca Mefal, or Broadway Musical. Th these two have no sources, and because it's an inner join, they do not show up here. So only three. So if you look at uh, source description, there are three unique sources, and only those uh, you know show up. So naturally, our next uh, next query is, uh, what are some unfounded rumors? You know, like and when I say unfounded, it means they don't have any source, right? And so now, if you want to write uh, a rumor that does not have a source and that does not is our clue. Whenever we think of a does not query, which means we are we are querying for a hole or data that does not exist. And when your your brain or it should automatically make the connection that whenever you're looking for holes, you are looking at an outer join. Whenever you're looking at uh, an exclusive kind of query, like uh, there are two three different kinds of queries, like some of, one of, any of, all of. Uh, I'm I'm not going to explain all of them. Uh, I think uh, most of these terms are understood. But the main thing is this: whenever you are trying to query for absence of data. Uh, inner join should be on your mind, and so in this case, uh, we'll we we'll sort of take this query that we started writing, and we'll change it uh, to an left outer join, and similarly here, uh, also a left outer join. Uh, and now, if we execute this, we're going to see some interesting tidbits, and that interesting bits is that the the couple of places where there was no uh, source. Uh, they've showed up uh, here. Sever, for example, Severus Love Lily has no corresponding source, and uh, and Broadway Musical uh, has no corresponding source. Uh, for now, ignore this record. It's a special record. Uh, I will. I'm going to cover this a little later. Uh, this is a mi this is a mixed record. So, Brangeli for example, Brangelina does have a source here, uh, and yet it shows up here. It's because of the uh, because of data corruption, and I, I'll I'll try to cover a technique where you can uh, you can avoid some of these things. But for the purpose of uh, this particular query, if you want to find out uh, rumors that have no sources, 
what we want to do is that we want to add a where, where condition where clause where say uh, sources or, or rumor is null. And so if we do this, uh, server is love lily and Broadway musical. So these two sources, uh, these two rumors have no corresponding source associated with them. And so this is what I call as querying for whole. Uh, one quick thing before we move on to other more complex queries. If you notice the moment I changed uh, one inner join uh, to an outer join, I also had to change the other inner join to an outer join. Uh, and, and why is that? The answer to that, again, is very, very fundamental uh, to understanding multiple table joins. Uh, I highly encourage you to uh, experiment and play with this uh, in your at, at home or on your uh, uh, PSQL consoles or your editors. Uh, create uh, a schema like this, add some data, and then try to do mix and match and see what data you get. I'm going to explain why we had to do left and left outer join here. And, and the secret to that is how joins are executed or calculated uh, by the DB engine. So as far as uh, databases go or DB engines go, the joins are worked uh, from left to right, uh, left first uh, to right most. And every single join treats the entire left half of that as a set in itself. So for example, uh, we started uh, we started rumors, uh, which is our left most set. Uh, rumor is joined with, uh, left out to join with rumor sources. So as far as these two sets are concerned, rumor sources is the right side and rumors is the left side. Uh, and then we've seen, the, seen what happens with this query. Then the moment we add a third table in the mix, which is in this case sources. So when we when we come to this particular join, uh, left out a join sources s on rs dot source id equal to s dot id. For this particular side, the right hand side set uh, is sources, whereas the left hand side set is the result of this join. And this is why I was uh, so particular about you not thinking in terms of tables when it comes to join because joins do not operate on tables, joins operate on sets. So the left-hand side set in this case is the result of this join. And so now what happens is like, if you mix and match, it is going to give you a slightly unpredictable result or rather not unpredictable, surprising results. Because if you are used to thinking in terms of table, then you're looking at the table data uh, and then you, are you will try to, or we will try to work out uh, what is going to be in our result set based on the tables. Whereas when the joins are calculated, the DB engines are looking at the, join, the result of this join. So in this case, what's going to happen is rumors, when left joined with rumor sources, produce a certain output. So, so for example, now I'm, I have joined on everything. And this, as far as our join is concerned, this is our table. And so now, uh, if you look at the second uh, half of this, uh, we're joining sources on uh, rs uh, dot source ID uh, is equal to source dot ID. So in this case, rs dot source ID is going to be null here. And because this is part of the left side, uh, the left side itself is null. It is not going to feature in our result set. Uh, I'll repeat again. Uh, for for the second half of our join, left outer join sources, uh, which is what you call a multiple table join, right? Now we're running between three tables: table number one, table number two, and table number three. When we're joining table number three, table number three is not joined with one and two. Table number is three is joined with the result of joining one and two, and the result of joining one and two. Uh, has these null entries. And so because uh, our original definition of left join, it says pick entries that are that have a match on the right side or are null on the right side. Uh, but you must have an entry on the left side, which means the moment we do an inner join, uh, these entries are going to vanish. Every time you do an inner join, let's say you add any inner join in, in here, it will treat the left hand side and right hand side as your regular joins and then 
both side match must be present and it's not very difficult to see i mean you, you can just add it here and, and execute it so these two rows are going to vanish from our data set and it will effectively act uh, no, no. it will effectively act as a left join or so an inner join so can someone tell why we did not get any single result in this particular query quick answer anybody i i think there are a few answers uh yep there you go yeah so i think uh got no yep absolutely so i'm glad so many people were able to answer so the reason is this qualifier immediately removes all the record from the result set because there is no way that rs dot id is going to be null because we've added now inner join whereas obviously when we change it to outer join which means there are going to be holes this gives us our original query where the right hand side is null and the left hand side is not null uh so far so good so the next uh the next set of queries that i want to what i want to explain is the difference between having conditions in the predicate whereas on for example this on uh, clause it's called a join predicate and the and the where clause so for example you could put this rs dot id even here you know and and it would still give us some results we don't know what those results are going to be because we haven't learned uh, you know what what that means but you could uh, you can see that it's not a syntax error there's no error it just returns something uh, and i don't know that that looking looking at the result doesn't make any sense it's just written in null on the right side for everybody uh so let's go look at, let's go look at what that means what it means to have conditions in the predicate and conditions in the where clause uh so the number one thing is uh this whatever comes after on uh the predicate is our original selector for the join if you remember the 3 by 3 uh join diagram that we had done on on the whiteboard uh <clears throat> this predicate is going to decide what row comes and what row goes so when you are trying to query something like uh, say again holes for example uh, there are some techniques where you could put conditions in the in the predicate and it will give you different results let uh, now here for example in this particular case when we are joining say rumors with rumor sources by default we are joining on uh, this one single condition that whether rumors or id uh, is equal to rumors uh, rs or rumor sources or rumor id i can add another condition here something like rumor source dot created at uh, i don't know do i have a time stamp here mm, to supply that yeah so you know so i i can add a condition like rumor source dot supply that uh, you know less than some 2020 2020 or this uh, 7 31 uh what what is what this means is that we are adding a join condition now based on uh not just the join column or or, or the column that uh, feel like a join but we are also adding like a random condition uh, or maybe not so random but we are adding a condition or a qualifier as it's called for the join now what this does is see from a from a fundamental understanding of join this changes nothing as far as the join calculation is concerned what it changes is our understanding of the result set now the way postgres or mysql or any other db engine works is that it's going to look at these two sets it is going to calculate your working set where every row is joined with every other row uh, and then it's going to apply this predicate to that particular joined row so now rumors uh, for example has uh, three columns and rumor sources has about 1 2 3 4 columns right so now this uh, between the two tables you have seven columns at your disposal seven values uh, from the tables and so you can write any condition on on this for example you could also write on 1 equal to 1 and it that will also it will also work because for 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 the db engine it doesn't matter what you put here as long as it's a boolean and it's predicate is going to simply work so now the the results are not surprising so if you look at it 
you have so many results on 30 35 it's what it has done is it has joined every single row from left hand side to every single row on the right hand side it's because the predicate always returns true so in our original case what happened was it applied this predicate rumors or id is equal to rs or rumor id and there were only four or five rows or four or five combinations where uh, that was true and because you we were doing left out a join it also added the right hand side null row and uh, never forget that and so so that is that is the main thing you want to understand that uh when you think of a join don't always think in terms of the two columns that join those two tables but think of that as a literally like a joining or or a welding uh, for those two sets now if i if i add a condition like supply that how does that affect uh, what comes in our result set uh, let's say in uh, there is a rumor which has a source but that uh, the supply that time stamp is say in august here we are querying for something that is uh, before uh, 31st july now what will happen is in normal case uh, you will get every single matching row on the right hand side when we only only do a match on id and rumor id whereas when you add a qualifier or additional condition that also is going to be taken care uh, in terms of a join now now the, the key difference is this if you put this uh, condition in where clause now where clauses execute after join clauses which means this condition will be applied to the final result set whereas in join especially with left outer join if you add a predicate here what what will happen is there could be some rows where the id is equal to rumor id but the supply that is you know in in august it does not match and in that case it will produce a, a right hand side match uh, so let's see if this works uh, and what it gives us is this clear uh, uh, is everyone able to follow i i can repeat this as much as uh, as much as needed so for example now now if you look at it so let's add uh, let's add this rumors dot id mm. Mm. oops so now uh if we do it without it there are uh, about nine rows in our result set and some most of them are if you look at the supply that they're all in september so in the in our current result set when we join we are joining based on the id match but the moment we add another condition a qualifier on the date that match goes away and we have right join on on the right side there are null entries is this clear like is is this part because this is this is fairly critical uh, to understanding uh, like how joins behave especially when you add predicates that are not intuitive so now in this case if you were to query for uh, rumors that were say sourced in only july right or rumors that were not sourced in july for example let's talk about holes so this this query what it's giving you is that the any rumor that does not have a corresponding supply lat in in the month of say august or before august and so whenever you are thinking of holes also think of uh, where clauses and conditions in where clauses versus conditions in join clauses it's a very powerful construct But once you understand that you don't have to join a table based on the id match alone uh then you can expand this pattern into many many different ways uh so far so good uh, i'm going to move on to a different uh, or a new category of queries uh in join uh where aggregates come into picture now let's say if we were to find uh, a rumor that was exclusively provided by somebody some source let's say there is a deal between the source and us and we're going to pay uh, that source on exclusivity so let's say somebody somebody gave us insider info about say google uh you know or whatever big company in this case and so we want to find out who uh, or which rumor was given to us by a single exclusive source 
now single exclusive source is often a signal of uh, any or, or rather all of query where we where it is not enough to look at a subset of the data it, it is important that we look at all of the data and again the moment you are looking at uh, holes or, or all you you're always looking at inner joints uh, outer joints and so uh, in this case if you want to write that query so the query will go something like this so you want to write something like select let's say for now we'll do select star numbers so this is a base query uh, again like we th we start thinking in terms of uh, working sets this is our base query where we are we are getting every single rumor and every single source associated uh, with it and now what we want to do is that we want to sort of gather uh, all the sources into like a single collection or we're going to write and this is where aggregates uh, aggregates come into picture uh, now again i'm not going to in depth about aggregate but i'm going to show you how to write this particular query uh, and specifically how it ties with uh, our our joins and our understanding of joins so here what we want to do uh, let's see where we By the way, there are many, many different ways of writing this query. Uh, group by is not the only way to write this query. There are other ways. If you're curious, I like I urge you to like sit down and experiment and figure out. So now if you look at this, uh, what it is giving us for the purpose of this, I'm going to explain what's happening in a little bit. So, so I'm adding description for the reason, uh, just to make sure it's a little more readable. In a normal query, you, you probably wouldn't add description, but here is what is happening. Uh, this rumor, Brangelina was sourced by uh, null three and one. Uh, then this, the second rumor was sourced by one and four. Uh, this Broadway was sourced by nobody. Uh, Severus loves Lily was sourced by nobody. And then Luca, my father, was sourced by six and five. Uh, what this gives us, uh, when, when, whenever we are looking at something like exclusivity or or all of or or each of. We want to aggregate all that data into something. Or we, we, we want all the data to be present. And for that reason, you always have to think about left outer join or, or left join. Because the moment you do inner join, some of these uh, some of these will basically vanish. They they won't even come. Uh, you know. For example, if we do this, let's, let's see what happens when we do inner join. So now the two that did not have any source, they've vanished. So in this case, so for example, that won't make a difference because when we are looking at uh, rumors from an exclusive source, which means the source is always going to be present, right? And so in this case, we are okay to do an inner join because now we are not looking at a whole, but we are looking at every single uh, source ID. And so if you want to, if you, what happens is if you were to write uh, queries based on where clauses here, then these uh, null and other entries, they're going to get left out of the working set. And then you won't be able to write each of kind of queries based on uh, based on this. So this is where your uh, aggregations uh, come into play. Aggregations uh, coupled with inner joints or outer joints uh, are very powerful. Uh, you can you can also do other other kind of uh, other kinds of query where you're looking at uh, a source that was, uh, for example, a combination of sources like you know two different sources sourcing something and again in that case uh, you are looking at uh, a hole for source one a hole for source one and a hole for source two and then when you want to co combine them you must have left out a join because now uh, your exclusivity is gone 
Uh, I'm going to take a small pause here and again ask if you know things are clear, not clear. Also, I want to do like a time check. Uh, you know how much time is left, uh, etc. Any questions so far that have come through? I don't see any. Uh, okay. If anyone has questions, please shoot. Okay, there's one question. Which tool are you using to run these queries? Uh, so this is uh, a tool by JetBrains called DataGrip. Uh, if you're serious about writing queries and using relational DBs, use DataGrip. It's amazing. Uh, it has a like impeccable autocomplete support. It supports different kinds of data sources. Uh, basically, anything SQL, DataGrip is quite fantastic. Uh, I'll link to it if you want. But DataGrip is what you're looking at. Uh, okay, cool. So because there are no more questions, we're going to move on to, I want to cover uh, the cursive and lateral joints. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, cool. So uh, before we move on to say, uh, say recursive joints, and I think we are also sort of running short of time, if I'm not wrong. Uh, Zaina, what is our tentative time limit? This one on 830, uh, I mean, it could go on for another 10, 15 minutes subject to Aditya's okay. availability also. Okay, cool, yeah, because, uh, sure. I'll, I'll try to wrap up in the next 10, 15 minutes. We, we have covered the core, uh, the core principles, but I want to make sure uh, we at least cover recursive joints once, because that's something uh, people don't see uh, see often uh, in, in their everyday programming. Uh, so if I'll quickly summarize uh, what we did, what we learned so far. Uh, then we'll, we'll look at the approach to write uh, joints and then we'll move on to recursive joints. I think we have that much time, uh, like we should be able to cover all that in, in about 15 minutes. Uh, so the number one thing uh, I'll go back to is the, the set diagram where we did uh, 1A and uh, uh, A1, 1, 1, 1, 1, the, the rectangular join, uh, followed by the different kinds of joints and how, how do you start. Uh, now the question is, what do you do with this knowledge and what do you do with this understanding and how do you actually start uh, composing more uh, more complex uh, joints? Uh, and then that that's what uh, we were sort of looking at when we tried to write some of these joints is that we always think in terms of uh, inner and outer and left and right. Uh, and we, we look at, are we looking at whole or are we looking at uh, presence of data? If you're looking at presence, then you look, go for inner join. If you're looking at holes, you, you go for outer joints. Uh, the, the, thing, the other thing that uh, we covered and which is important, if you want to compose multi-table join, is always remember our, uh, our three-level join that we did. Uh, for any join or any join clause in your complex join, it's always a join between the left-hand side set and the right-hand side set. And so, Never like if you if you're trying to if you're getting confused about what will show up in the result set and what will not show up, uh, just add brackets. You know for your own understanding, it, it's not syntactically correct, but just add like brackets for your own personal understanding. You can also like do indentation and whatnot, uh, and, and then sort of solve each bracket, uh, the innermost bracket first, and then sort of go outwards. That is that is one strategy that I I used to employ uh, when I was uh, when I was new. To join, uh, but the understanding that it's always a set, uh, from, and uh, we go from left to right, uh, that is the most important thing. And the second most important thing that we learned, uh, which you should intuitively understand, is the predicate. Now, if you're used to writing queries using Active Record, the moment I say rumors and rumor sources, the first thing that's going to come to your mind is rumor dot id equal to rs dot rumor id, and that is where I want you to take a pause. And, and think that, well, is that the predicate you want? Uh, and like I said, you can also add other conditions to the joints. <clears throat> so mentally, when you're working out uh, what the result set looks like, uh, look at the predicate and then see left and right uh, parts, whether there's a match. So on, on left join, if, if the predicate comes to true, uh, then it's gonna get selected. Or if it comes to null, then it's also get, uh, if it's false, then the left side is going to get selected. Whereas for for a left side, the right side is obviously going to be omitted. Uh, I've repeated like ten, I repeated this ten times so far because it is that important. 
uh, predicates uh, like that's that's one big lesson like as, as long as you understand how predicates uh, affect a particular join <coughs> i think uh, you will understand uh, joins just well okay cool so uh, i'm going to sort of uh, take a pause on specific joins here uh, we've covered like inner and outer and we covered left and right which is what most of the joins that you will write will be uh, now let's look at uh recursive uh joins and what what does even recursion mean i'm going to quickly show you how the labels table looks like uh so we have things like computer science operating system etc so there are a bunch of labels in that hierarchy uh computer science and uh, arts and humanities are like top uh, top level labels because they don't have any other parent and so now now let's look at how a well recursive query works and we are going to use the understanding of joins that we have built so far in order to construct a recursive query can someone tell me what are the two fundamental things of a recursive function like what are the two things that are must for recursion does anyone want to volunteer uh looks at the chat entry base case is one what is the other self reference sure but that's not i mean sure without self reference there's no recursion well base base case and termination clause uh, the, these are the two things uh, often base case and termination clause are rolled into one but the two things that uh, are must for deterministic recursive recursive function is a base case and a termination clause and so <clears throat> what postgres uh, so this particular syntax is specific to postgres uh other databases also support similar syntax they're not very very different from what you what, what you're looking at here but there might be minor differences in how the syntax is uh, structured uh i don't think that should ever stop you from writing a query like this now the query we're trying to write here is very simple given a particular label find out all the descendants of that table now uh, if you've done any kind of competitive programming or if you've taken an interview at a big company recently Uh, you likely uh, you likely understand what depth first search means so here we are basically doing a depth first search uh, let's say we start at uh, computer science as a top level or, or the first label then we want to look at every child of computer science which in this case is operating systems device drivers software engineering data science and then again each of their uh, children you know in turn and so without any kind of support for recursion this is not possible unless you write a recursive query in this particular schema it's not possible to write that query uh, which is why there is a special uh, uh, special case consideration called uh, recursion by the way before we write this uh, query i want to quickly add that this is actually a very inefficient way to store this particular uh, data there are other better data structures uh, like adjacency matrix and l trees uh, if you want to store trees uh, those are uh, slightly better than this on a small data uh, data set this is going to work just fine uh, but if you're looking at if you're writing a recursive query on a table that has 100 million rows uh, you know it's not going to it's not going to terminate it will take forever to run uh, based on obviously based on indexes and other things but recursive queries are expensive and they are best written for smaller data sets uh, and not for larger data sets all right with that uh, let's quickly look at a structure of a basic recursive query uh, so this is how the syntax looks like do uh, uh, don't try to read it all at once i'm going to read it for you and i'm going to explain each and every part so the the structure is like this with recursive some uh, some label here uh, some you can say arguments uh, just like a function uh, and then uh, the function body so for all practical purposes we could consider this as a function even though it's not a function truly uh it's just a set operation uh so back to our uh, two uh, critical uh things that uh, are needed for recursion uh, the number one is base case uh you must we must have a non recursive uh case so like for example if i before actually we do that let me execute and show it to you so when we execute this it actually gives us so i'm looking at uh, number 4 right now so all the children of node number 4 which is software engineering 
so in our uh, in our original case software engineering has uh four and so yeah programming languages op functional programming and then 9 10 11 so which means interface segregation classes objects and then esoteric languages so these are this is what we are looking at uh when we are looking we are trying to get all the descendants of software engineering and so when we execute this uh, so what we get uh this is our top level label then the three children and then the three children of the second the first child and then esoteric languages from it. so this three we get uh, so this is what we call as a base case. Uh, we are starting with software engineering as the first label, uh, ID number four. Uh, that's our base case. Without that, there is no query. And you can see if you try to say, uh, co comment this out and try to execute it, uh, pull this gives us a very nice error. Uh, error recursive query all labels does not have the form non-recursive union all, which means we must have a non-recursive uh, clause in it, which is our base case. So it's going to start uh, the result set at the base base case, and then it's going to recursively collect results. The other thing I'm going to show is that if you try to do left out to join here, let's see what happens. Uh, here you go. So recursive reference to query, whatever, all labels must not appear within an outer join. And why is that? The reason is simple with outer join, our result set is unbounded. And what do I mean by unbounded? Every time you do an outer join, you are going to get queries that are null on the right hand side. And your recursion will never terminate. You will keep getting nulls on the right hand side. And uh, that, whereas with inner join, what happens is when our query reaches esoteric languages or when it reaches interface segregation, there is no child uh, element for interface segregation, which means no further. Uh, outer inner join is possible. Same with the language. So these uh, you can call the leaf nodes as our termination clauses here. And for that reason, Postgres will not allow you to add an outer join because it, it is going to give you an unmoderated query and the recursion will not terminate. Uh, again, I think there's a question. Any anything? Uh, you mentioned recursive queries are good for small tables is that only the case for recursive queries uh okay so so fundamentally small tables uh, is a what i would say is a is an implementation detail or a performance detail and when we are trying to understand uh recursive queries we don't need to uh, consider that but from a practical perspective uh you definitely need to consider that for example how many columns uh, are indexed uh, how many columns are not indexed, and what are the performance uh, characteristics of your query? So these are some of the things you need to look at, and these are very uh, data specific uh, uh, things that uh, Postgres or you cannot uh, tell beforehand before before actually looking at your data. But uh, there is no rule which says that you should only use or no no thumb rule that says that we sh you should only use uh, recursive queries for small uh, data sets. You can use it on large data sets. If your data server, if, if your database server can handle it, go for it. Uh, what you should have is an intuitive understanding of how recursion works. Uh, if, because I'm not 100% sure if there's like any uh, thing like tail call optimization here and those kind of things are not exposed uh, on the query level to us. So from looking at the query, it's very hard to say whether there'll be uh, tail call and other other optimization op applied here, and so performance characteristics, like I said, are very very dependent on the actual data. Uh, but don't let la don't let your uh, data size uh, stop you from writing a recursive query. By all means, you should have, uh, once in your lifetime you should write a recursive query on on a production database. Uh, we have one more uh, question. Uh, well, oh, since you stopped, yeah. um, what is the use of with recursive? So oh, okay. we okay. might so, yeah. be going into a segue into CTs, CTs, but up to you. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll quickly explain. Yeah. So like like Aditya said, uh, so this is what you call as a common table expression. Uh, I I don't think we have enough time to actually cover the entire thing, but with recursive is basically a uh, a syntax syntax form. Uh, recursive is just a keyword here. We can remove it. 
uh, the, the recursive keyword allows us to refer to all labels from within all labels. That is why it's called recursive. But the general form is this. You have with uh, some label uh, as and here uh, a set here. And then you can have say label one uh, and say label two as uh, set, etc. And then uh, on that you write some select query. Uh, this is the general structure for a common table expression. Uh, it's called common table expression because the, these uh, sets or tables, as you call them, they are common to all the queries. They're available uh, to, to the other tables and to your main query. Uh, and so what this is something like a let block of a, of a programming language. Like if you've done any kind of scheme or OCaml or Haskell, uh, there are let blocks where you, you define a block and then you give it a name or a function, name function. You can, you can think of it as a name function available to you uh, at query time. Uh, so that's what this syntax is. Uh, with recursive is just a special form. If you want to add a recursion to it, then you need to add that keyword. Without that, Postgres will not allow you to refer to itself. Reason being the same thing, if you don't declare it as recursive, Postgres will not know if you're writing a bounded query or an un un unbounded query. And again, when I say Postgres, I mean MySQL or any other. Uh, so I'm going to quickly explain uh, the recursive query and then we're going to stop uh, here. We have totally run out of time. Uh, but here's how it works. This is our base case, uh, which you've already seen. Uh, it is unioned with uh, our regular query. And the way this works is every time the recursive call happens, the result set is added. That particular, the result of that recursive call is added to a final result set. And you keep accruing your final result sets. Uh, which means what is what is happening here is what we uh, this particular part join is exactly the same as any inner join that we have seen so far. We are joining labels our table with all labels are currently running a result set. So in the case of base case, when when the recursion runs for the first time, it's going to have this particular set in all labels. So on the first execution. Uh, you got the base case, which is our uh, result set number one here at the bottom. In the second recursive call, you get all children of the, the first case, which means uh, all of these here. All of these here. Because what happened was now this uh, first record four acted as a different right side table or right side set. Then you, you, you get a join on that. Then on the next recursion, this next set acted as the right side set. And then you got uh, this 10 and, and and likewise so this is how you typically write recursive queries the thing i want to tell and what i want you to understand is that if you if you stop looking at this syntax it's just your regular join query and nothing fancy all we are doing is we're just accruing and doing a join with a current uh, table or current set that we're working with and that with the recursive syntax allows us to do that it's just a special form of uh, common table expressions. Cool, I think we are completely out of time. We are in fact three minutes over. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here. <coughs> but if you're interested uh, or if, if anything stood out as like you didn't understand, shoot me a question, Twitter here, anywhere. Uh, and I'm happy to you know chat. Uh, those who are who have or, who registered for my class uh, that is coming next this month, <coughs> let me know. What we'll do is we'll not uh, we'll not cover the same thing again. We'll probably try to cover something more exciting uh, because we already covered this. But in any case, I'll I'll take a I'll take a pause now, and I'll open the floor for questions if there are any. Uh, otherwise, that's it. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot, Swanan. Uh, that was very insightful, and I guess I think you know I learned a couple of new things over there. Um, we still have, I think we can take questions for another four or five minutes more. So if anyone does have questions, please fire away. Meanwhile, maybe Swanan, you can, uh, just display on the screen, your Twitter handle or something where folks can get in touch with you. Oh yeah. That's a good idea. Let me, let me do that.
So the uh, the, the takeaway from this, apart from all the set and settled things that we talked about, uh, is that uh, if you want to learn, like you know, open up your PC or console, console, create those tables, and fire away the queries. Uh, that is the best way to experiment and understand and learn. And that's how I learn. Right. Uh, meanwhile, we have a few questions coming in. The first one is, uh, do recursive joins work on JSON types as well? Yeah, so, okay, cool. Yeah, so JSON is, like JSON types are nothing special. Uh, if you can, uh, so here's the thing with JSON. If you have a JSON value in a single column, then, it, then you need to unpack that value in a, in a table. Or, or in a set. See, for Postgres or for any relational DB, uh, there are types of uh, values. One is your uh, a scalar, actually it's not scalar, but one is a value expression and one is a table expression. So table expression is uh, typically when you have multiple records and a value expression is when you have a single value. It could be it could be like an array, it could be a multi-valued value, like an array, but still at the heart it's a single value. And so you can't join or you can't do table expressions or table operations. On so uh, some data in a, in a JSON uh, column, for example, you'll have to unpack that. And there are, there are a couple of uh, SQL constructs for that. Uh, but the, if you want to Google, the word you're looking at is unpack. So you want, you want to unpack JSON into a table. And then once you have a table, then you know the, the world is your stage. You can write any join. Whatever join we looked at, it can be like uh, written on top of that table or a set, as I said. Cool. All right. Uh, another request uh, is: Can we get access to the queries used in this talk? So the all the scale stuff that you put, maybe you put yeah, it on the gist I'll, or something. Yeah, I'll do the. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do in a gist, and I'll also put the diagram, uh, the hand-on diagram that we did. Uh, I actually, I have a blog post on that as well. I'll, I'll link to both. I'll, I'll share that diagram. That diagram is very useful. Like if you're writing a, uh, if you're writing a query, put that diagram up in, in the front end. Uh, that helps. Great. I guess that is it then. Uh, thanks so uh, much. There are two questions Please. from Pranjal. Uh, I, okay. Aditya, yeah. I've shared both of them with you. Oh, yes. yes, yes. Oh, is this from, oh, uh, right, from right, YouTube? Right. Okay, so uh, the first question is, what is database sharding? Okay. Wow, okay, yeah. Out of, out of uh, sorry man, out of scope for this. Uh, sharding is basically partitioning of data. It's one of partitioning, uh, logical partitioning. Uh, but uh, it's too detailed a topic to cover right now. Uh, maybe, you know, Aditya can talk on it later. <laughs> But yeah, definitely out of scope for this. This is great management lesson in delegation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there was one more question from Pranjal uh, where he was asking about what is the use of with recursive. I don't know if you already addressed Yeah, we, we covered that. Yeah, okay. All right. Great. Okay, so on this note, uh, Swanan, thanks for this extempo talk. I hope you have lots of water and dinner tonight. <laughs> Aditya, thanks for patiently sitting through this. And uh, I think like Swanan said, we really hope uh, to see you on some of these sessions. Uh, so folks, we'll uh, continue with uh, the SQL uh, uh, discussions. Uh, I think uh, Swanan can post some of the uh, resources also on the on the Hasgeek page, uh, and those can also be shared as updates with participants and for anyone else who wants to see. Uh, we will uh, come back with another uh, session on uh, on uh, SQL, uh, maybe a, a war story session where all of us can sort of share uh, all the horrible things that have happened and what kind of like gas fires we've uh, doused and whatnot. Uh, having said that, uh, feel free to suggest to us um, uh, topics that are of interest to you. Uh, and if you'd like to, uh, to have discussions around specific topics, uh, 
Swanand Swanand runs a very wonderful community called Papers We Love. Do check it out. And uh, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, have a good evening, and uh, hopefully uh, you shall have you shall be able to do more fearless joins going forward from now onwards. Uh, thanks again, Swanand. Yeah, uh, thanks everyone. Welcome. Thanks for giving the opportunity. Right. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.